800-450-7876. Let's bring on now Sister Shahrazad Ali. Welcome back to WOL Radio. Well, how are you? Assalamu alaikum, my sister. <laughs> Wa alaikum salam. <laughs> good to have to talk to you. Always great to talk to <laughs> Sister Shahrazad Ali. You know, what I want, you know, there's so much we, we we could talk about, folks. And let me open the lines at 800-450-7876. Your book. Are you still a slave? That book, uh, that, that was a, a litmus test to judge if black people are still slave. And you meant, you, and I know what you meant, you meant mental slavery. What, what, right. can, can you help us out with that? What are some of the things that we can identify if some of our brothers and sisters are still slaves? What are they doing wrong? Well, uh, and the purpose of the book was to help us to address the fact that many of us still act like slaves even though we don't have a, a formal slave master over us in the same way that we did, you know, uh, five or 600 years ago. Uh, I agree with the Indian that was just on there. We, too, suffer from generational trauma, and I talked about that in Are You Still a Slave, except I said it was genetic now, the fear and the stress and all of those things that come with going through that. Uh, it's very difficult to get modern black people to even discuss slavery because we all think that uh, it's past, it's over, and white people have told us that it doesn't matter anymore. You just pick up from where you are now and proceed. And if you'll notice, uh, all of the rules that they put on us during and after slavery, they don't put that on anybody else. You know, they welcome in the people in from Syria and Iran and other places, and they're not telling them, pull yourself up by your own bootstraps. They're bringing them in and helping them. You know, we weren't offered that. We were promised that, remember, that 40 acres and a mule, and uh, they didn't give us any of that. They get, they gave us drugs and welfare, <laughs> you know, but we never got the 40 acres and the mule and stuff. Um, I wanted to talk about the family structure and how that's connected. Uh -huh. uh, the best time for the black family was in the uh, late 50s and early 60s. During that time, you had almost everybody had a two-parent home. We had less distractions because uh, racial separation permitted us to think for ourselves and mind our own business. And so, you know, we just dealt more in our own communities. And uh, we didn't have as many variables to make selections. You know, we didn't have to pick out the new white people Nike sneakers or the new cell phones and uh, uh, all of those things. We didn't have those options, and so we dealt with what we had. And then after the 60s came in, it, it brought integration and sexual freedom. You know, Carl? And, yeah, right. Uh, but let me interrupt and, and ask you this. Why, why, yeah. why did that impact us more than the other groups? Because we have been robbed of all knowledge of ourself. And so any new information that came along, we wanted to jump on it because we thought it would better ourselves. We never got debriefed. And whenever people have been held captive around the world, they have to go through a debriefing process. And the American government supports a debriefing process for everyone but us. And so when we saw that coming, we thought any kind of freedom. Since by then, by the 60s, we didn't have any memory of what freedom was like in regard to accepting social responsibility with our families or helping to take care of each other or eating the proper food or respecting our women or marrying the mother of our children and respecting our men. We didn't have any memory of all of those kind of things. And so anything that they brought, that was really the very first time in history that we accepted their agenda. We adopted what their priority was. And this and was in the 60s? The time, we didn't have any reason to join any women's liberation movement. Uh, <laughs> the only people that had ever repressed us, the black man and the black woman, was the white man. So we didn't need to get uh, liberated from the black man because we didn't have any memory of him being our boss or telling us what to do. But we jumped on all of those things. We jumped on the pill. We jumped on that there was no more a necessity for marriage, you know, because prior to 1965 or 66, if you got somebody pregnant, you married them, and you were going to try to make that work before anything else happened. And having to accept that kind of responsibility, it kind of kept our men from running around. You know, there wasn't no man back there talking about, yeah, I got 18 kids. It wasn't nobody talking that because he had uh, 
to take that responsibility at that time. And then as the welfare got more popular in the early 60s, and they started giving out different benefits, uh, food and the stamps and all of those different things and rents and all of that, all of those things just made us think we were going to finally get some kind of reparations. Okay? And so now at that time, as I said, uh, almost 80% of our people were in a two-parent home or some kind of way connected with the parents. And even the grandparents lived in the home sometime then. Well, now, with all of that freedom that we allegedly got in the 60s, uh, over 70% of our women are single, widowed, separated, or divorced. And those 30% of our women that's got a man, the 70% of the women that ain't got no man fighting with them all the time. So it's a big mess now that nobody wants to acknowledge is really going on, you know. And now our men, let me mention that, who you black men only make up about 5 or 6% of the total American population. You know, we may be 12% of black people of the total population, but that y'all little group is only about 5 or 6%. And that puts you at 70% of the prison population or more and uh, almost 50% of all police shootings. So it's all, you know, and so, and when I talk about these things, people say that I'm old school. Oh, you talking about back in the day. No, I'm not. I'm talking about right now. That imagination that things have changed is called the imagination of truth. We imagine they have changed because we have better wigs and better sneakers. And, uh, hang on a uh, second, Sister Sharza. Right, hang on a second. We gotta take a break here. We gotta check the traffic okay. and the weather. The DMV. Shout out to Ali, he's our guest, to folks. You can join this conversation with her. It's toll free. It's eight hundred four five zero seventy eight seventy six. We're taking calls after the traffic and weather update on fourteen fifty W O L, where information is power. And now, now back, 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 back to the Carl Nelson Show. On Washington, D.C.'s 1450. 1450 WOL Radio. Thank you for staying with us. I guess this is the Sharzad Ali. You probably lost a lot. Last time you saw her on TV, she was on the HL, HLN Headline News Network with the Dr. Drew Show. She's here, here right now for us at 800-450-7876. And before we took uh, the break for the traffic and weather update, you were telling us a, a story. Sister Charlotte. Yeah, I, I just like to set the platform for where we should be talking. Uh, you know, right now, of course, let me mention this before you let them in. You know, we have this voting issue we're dealing with. I know that's what y'all done beat that topic to death. Everybody, that's the new topic. And, you know, we've been voting since about 65. And at that time, we had about 750 black politicians, I believe. Well, now it's 2016, and we got almost 8,000 black politicians who sell us out daily. And we haven't seen any real benefit from that. This is one of them, what they used to call that illusion of inclusion. Uh, We are not benefiting from white people affairs still. The only time we ever made any progress is when we mind our own business and dealt with our own priorities instead of trying to jump on what they're doing. All of that's to make us think that we have some say-so about how the racist American government is being run. And we don't. We just don't. Uh, we we don't have no say-so about that. They, they uh, treat us bad, disrespect us, and don't give us anything that we need to to survive. Now, if we could elect a black president, and most of us don't think that that benefited us in the way we thought it should or would, then what makes us think that we're going to pick some other white people? It don't matter which white people we pick. It don't matter if these two white people is bad. The other ones wasn't good. Yeah, it don't matter. The tall white man, the short white man, the fat white lady, the skinny white lady. It don't It You know, we don't have any say-so in this government. And we keep trusting the enemy. Now, we couldn't trust the enemy on civil rights. We couldn't trust them on job equality, justice in the courts, fair housing, uh, uh, interpreting even the Bible. We couldn't trust them. So why are we going to trust them to count some votes? 
That's some real talk. 800-450-7876. Yeah, that's the question. <laughs> you, what, so the, 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 you mentioned that, the, uh, I guess, the breakup of the black family. Before I take calls, do you think we can reverse that? 70% of our black households are led by women, female women? or female. The only way say? we can reverse it is by uh, implementing a rule that we had before we got here that makes black women shudder and go so crazy and insanely jealous that we can't do it. The only way we could reverse that is that more men are going to have to take responsibility for more than one woman and her family. Not just responsibility for her in the bed. I'm talking about take responsibility with her household and helping her raise her children and protecting her and making sure they all eat. That's the only way it's going to work. The men going to have to have more. Well, y'all already got more than one woman if you could figure it out. But you need to be able to do that in honesty and openly so that the children can have the support that they need and the women can stop terrorizing all of the men who already got a woman anyway. Uh, what about the brothers caught up in the legal system, uh, Sister Shahzad? How can we help them out? Well, ain't much we can do for them. You know, once the, the, the enemy get a hold of us, there's very little we can do. However... One thing we can do, you know, there's a lot of programs now about how men parent from prison. We need to get some men in these boys' and girls' life, if it's writing letters, visiting them once a month, whatever it is. And so the men in there who are sane, who have repented, and who are ready to live a civilized life, then, you know, I'm not against the sisters getting involved with some of them so that they can have some kind of uh, company and some kind of seniority of ideas and to run ideas across. Because just because a man is locked up, that don't mean that his brain is not operating as a man. You know, he just is confined. Well, we all confined in a certain kind of way. They confined in there by the bars. We out here trying to normalize our captivity and act like we free. So we all confined in a sense. We confined with ideas. We confined with a lot of things. But we gonna have to figure out how to get these women who are lonely and desperate to get involved with some kind of man so that we can have peace in our communities. Because as long as these women are single and running book wild because they have needs and they're lonely and they want the caress and touch of a man, we're not going to be able to get it worked out. So would you advocate the sisters uh, crossing over, uh, going to other races? No. We can't get along with our own people. How are we going to get along with somebody else? No, absolutely not. I don't advocate that. Why would anybody want to lay down with the enemy in particular? And the people who are our color from other countries, the enemy has conditioned them to hate us and disrespect us and disregard us. And so we couldn't really have peace with them. We don't know our own customs. We can't learn nobody else's. But no, I don't suggest we cross over. But that's something that's happening because of the desperation of women and the loneliness of women who don't have anybody. And so they want to go and lay down with the person who uh, looks like their former slave masters. So that's really a sickness right there. That's terrible. 800-450-7876, line one. Mr. Sherrill, I think it is, calling from Washington, D.C. Mr. Sherrill, now with Shahzad Ali. Are you there? Yes. Uh, yes. Assalamu alaikum, Sister Shahzad. Wa alaikum salam. Well, Thank you for being a champion for black people and black causes all over the world. We love you and keep up your good work. There's a brother in D.C. by the name of John Cheek, and he's running openly for reparations. And he's come up, he designed this ingenious plan that will make those that were the industries that were actually responsible for our enslavement to address this situation. Thus, it won't cost the taxpayers one thin dime. And we're fighting to get our people to understand and respect uh, and, and support him. And it's an uphill battle. What do you say to people when they don't even realize how much you have to love, that we have to love our people more than we hate ourselves? And I'll let you answer. <laughs> Uh, when I think of that group, and I'm sure it's a wonderful organization, one of the problems that I think that we have is that every generation want to start all over. Right now, the hottest thing out is Black Lives Matter. Well, we've had the NAACP, we've had SNCC, we've had CORE, we've got National Action Network, uh, we got uh, 
every kind of group you can name. And if you put all of them groups, if you put the heads of all of them groups in a room together, we would all disagree. So our problem is disagreement. That's the basis of all of the issues we have of not getting along. That's whether it's in a relationship, because every relationship is like a marriage. Every time you get two or more people together in a group, you got a marriage. And most of them people do not get along, do not agree. That's why we are not able to, say, pool our resources and put our money together to build something or do something, because we don't agree. So... I don't think there's anything you're going to be able to do to convince white people to give all of us some money because most black people is trying to just get white people to give them some money individually through different, you know, kind of aspects. And so I don't think that there, I don't know of any way to do that until we can agree on something. Let me tell you a real quick story, Carl. Let me tell you all this here. I went to a birthday party last weekend, a beautiful party. The sister's husband was 80 years old, but he was really gorgeous and everything. So she asked the people to wear all black. Half of the people there didn't wear black. They had on blue, purple, green, and yellow. So I went around the room and just started asking the people, you know, well, why you didn't wear the black? Well, I thought this was better. Well, you know, I just don't let nobody tell me how to dress. I this, I that, and all of these different excuses. And I thought to myself, how are we going to ever agree on any massive life or death issues? We can't even agree on a color. We can't agree hardly on nothing. So our problem is uh, just disagreement, not just disorganization, because that comes from the disagreement. Our problem is disagreement. No, you're not going to be able to get everybody to agree on the reparation thing. And we need to pick up some of the old banners we already got and start trying to make them work. We keep trying to come up with something different every 30, 40 years, and it just leads us in the same place, nowhere. But isn't that because we've been programmed to hate each other, to fight against each other? Well, we already been programmed for that, but since we know that, why we can't do it different. Since we know that, everybody talks about that that's in the so-called conscious circle. Everybody know that. We can't get along either. So that's apparently not the whole solution. You know, when you know better, really, you'll do better. But just having the information, all of us have proven with those hidden colors, DVDs, that that uh, a brother, uh, the good brother out there, Tariq, has been putting Tariq. out. Now, everybody loves them. We love Tariq for doing it. But however, every time I talk to somebody, they say, well, when y'all going to do the next one? Well, how many do y'all need? The purpose of that was to teach us and to bring us up and to get us enlightened. But everybody ain't learned all the information on them three or four he got out there already. We ain't ready for another one. We still ought to be studying the information that came out of the Nation of Islam and the Black Panthers and some of them groups. We still need to be trying to figure that out. We ain't ready for nothing new. And we keep trying to make up something new to keep from doing the work that's required to do the other things. Oh, wow. 800-450-7876, line two. Taurus calling us from Houston. Tora? Good afternoon, Carla, sister. Good afternoon. I'm wondering, when you spoke on reversing the black family, and earlier you mentioned sexual freedom, how do we combat against the forces that are clearly in play that are working against us being able to reverse or revise the black family when we have things like gender bender days being allowed in school and people walking around saying, I don't identify any longer as male or female. I'm just, I'm binary is the new term. Yeah. Well, the requirements for that once again is some things that we're not going to do. We outright refuse to do them. Okay, the number one requirement would be separation. I tell you what, hang on a second, Sister Showers. Shar- stay with us, Tar, because we got to take a quick break here. I'll let you answer that question. Interesting question, by the way. Eight hundred four five zero seventy eight seven six gets you on. Take your calls next on fourteen fifty W O L, where information is power. to the Carl Nelson Show. On Washington, D.C.'s 1450. 1450 WOL Radio. 
And thank you for staying with us, folks. Our guest is Sister Shahrazad Ali. Number to call to reach her is 800-450-7876. I mentioned last saw her on TV on the on headline news, HLN Network, with uh, Dr. Drew. Well, she's here now. Any question you want to ask her, she's willing and able to answer them. So, uh, Sister Shahrazad, I'm going to let you finish what you are saying before we left for the break. Yeah, she was asking, what could we do to take some of the... Uh, 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 low-class ideas and sexual innuendo out of our environment in order to revive the black family. I'm paraphrasing, but that's what her question was. And uh, I was saying that the first thing we would have to do is to separate our children from the slave master's educational system, which is something that we all talk about generation after generation. And almost every black school that has tried to survive has failed. Okay? So we get the free education in the public school system, but that free education has corrupted our children and our parents. So the first thing we would have to do is to either educate our children at home, start up our own school, which would probably take 50 more years, uh, but we would have to separate our children from the slave masters educational program. We would have to control the TV, DVDs, and movies that our children watch. That takes a lot of energy, and we have to create something else for them to do, because they too have become addicted to the filth and the degradation that white people call entertainment. The third thing we would have to do is to educate our boys and girls separately. Put the girls in one room with women, put the boys in other rooms with men. That's how you are able to teach manhood or teach womanhood. We would have to do that. We would have to take sex out of being the priority. You know, and it's interesting that we have allowed that, you know, uh, and she's right. A lot of the people now are saying that this, and Michael Jackson helped start all that androgyny and all of that. This is what they wanted to do. They wanted to have a society where there are no men and no women. There are no gender-specific responsibilities. There's uh, none of that. Just You just could be a person. Well, that's a bunch of nonsense. That doesn't work, and it certainly would destroy all of man based on that. But, uh, you know, we're dealing with issues like the transgender bathroom. Should, because somebody feel like they are a boy, they should be able to, but they're a girl, they should be able to go into the men's bathroom and vice versa. Well, we all know that that's a bunch of sickness that's not going to work just because of the perversion that the people practice already. It's nobody with a little girl going to let them go in the bathroom with some man because he dressed up like a woman. That ain't going to work. We know that ain't going to work. But, however, that is becoming law. So we have to have some kind of way to separate ourselves from that. Every time I use the word separate, everybody go into a panic. Because we can't imagine any life without the enemy supervising our day-to-day activities. But that's the thing we would have to do. And we would have to also get our women to agree that there is no man on any continent, in any country, at any time in the history of life on the planet Earth, there has never been a man that only loved one woman his entire life. So if we could get our women to acknowledge that, that if our man love another woman, it don't mean he don't love us. It don't take anything from us in that way, and that we need to help, and it'll stop him from running around from woman to woman if he knows he's got a family that consists of two or three. The way it is, the men need to take on the responsibilities of uh, three women, and do it in an upright way. And I'm telling you, when a man takes on the responsibility of one or two families, now we're not talking just financial. We're talking about being the head of that family and give some direction and protection and instruction about how to, you know, protect it and how to live upright. When a man take on that, I want to let you know the last thing on his mind is sex. So you don't have to worry about that. Because that responsibility kick in? And then you don't have time for all of that laying around, talking about nothing and doing nothing. Because when you have responsibility for nation building, it takes all of your energy and attention. Sorry, you have a follow-up? Uh, just uh, wanting to know when she'll be back in Houston again, and I'll take that off the air. All right, thank you. I'm not sure when I am. There's some brothers down there that do invite me, and I think it's – it's supposed to either be next month or January, maybe something like that. Uh, 
Oh, I can't even remember the brother's name right now. But anyway, they usually invite me down every year to Houston. Uh, but I'll make an announcement on Carl's show when I get that straightened out. All right. I got a tweet for you. Somebody said that Trick Daddy, you know, the rapper from Miami, said he said uh, issued a challenge or a warning to black women. He said, black women, tighten up yourself or get replaced by black and Hispanic women. I'm trying to get your response to that. Well, that's already going on. We done lost our man. That's that's our problem, you know, and that's that's why so many of us are, are in such a lonely position. Um, we have refused to adopt some of the commonality ideas of just being feminine. You know, we rough and tough and fighting and cussing and we, I ain't going to have this and you ain't going to do that. All of that's just a bunch of nonsense that just expresses our insecurity. We are so afraid that somebody going to love somebody more than they love us that we're willing to not be loved at all. Makes no sense. No sense at all for us to do that. But that's how we are. If we can't have things like we think they should go based on the decisions and conclusions from our own insecurity, then we say we don't want to leave nobody at all because it's not in whatever perfection state that we've made up, some kind of nonsense we've made up that we think will create happiness. And let me tell you something else, Carl. This is the truth of that issue, too. There's no woman that want to be bothered with a man seven days a week. None! You hear me? So somebody need to take Thursday and Friday or Sunday or next week or something. We need the help. For all of that, we have too much responsibility between the children and the house and the cooking and the job and the car and the everything. You know, it's too much for one woman. It's just too much. All right. 800-450-7876. Line three. Amir is calling from D.C. Amir, you on with Sister Shahrazad Ali. Um, uh, Sister Shahrazad. Um, uh, greetings from the call. Yes. Um, yeah, we... Uh, we were part of the group that had you in the city um, a few times. Yes, uh, sir. One of the groups, anyway. And looking forward okay. in the near future. But want to ask a few things. One is, um, uh, what should we do? What is our uh, should be our goals and uh, some of our goals and objectives in the, in, uh, in light of this madness between Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump? Uh, the other one is. Um, well, tell you, hang on a minute. Let, let, let handle them one at a time. Yeah. All right. Well, our, our goal should be, as I said, to start minding our own business. I'm still in agreement. It don't matter what the white people name are. Either. As I said, they're all the same. And a lot of the white people in America, most of them feel just like Donald Trump is talking. That's why the race is so close. She's saying something completely opposite, but it's not like really slanted. Uh, more people agree with him. And they do want America back like it used to be. And you know where that puts you and me, if it gets back, make America great again. It was great off our blood and sweat, not theirs. But uh, as I said, w there's no way around it. We're going to have to start doing some things to separate. And uh, we're going to have to take to the earth. We're going to have to learn how to grow some food. And I'm not talking about go out on no massive farm. Most of us don't know how to grow a, a acorn. We don't know how to grow one tomato in a basket on the porch. We don't know. All of it's been grafted out of us, in a sense. And so some of the first things we can do is start hiring, trying to figure out how to eat and to reduce the amount of food that we do eat. Black people are too fat. All the women overweight. The men is big and fat, eating too much pork, eating too much red meat, not exercising. We need to get back to how we used to look when we were poor. See, wealth brings on fat. All right, I'm here. Yes. The uh, the other, um, how much, um, to what degree or extent do you think we're missing the boat or the, um, by not, uh, uh, by not putting forth an agenda of separation before our slave master, our slave master's children? And then I have one other question. Uh, we are not ready to put an agenda about separation at this time. Uh, I have always said that we needed to elect uh, from among our own some representatives to go to the American government to negotiate for what we need. Because we're not going to get it if it's just thrown in the pot in the Senate and the Congress with all of the other things that white people are doing. We ain't going to get nothing but the same little bit of crumbs we're getting now. 
you know. So we're not going to get anything that we really need on a on a definite basis. And so one of the things I think we could do, now that sounds like that's really wild, but that's no more wild than thinking piling up in the street and laying down and chanting, hands up, don't shoot, is going to make some progress. That didn't work either. You see, so we need to go on and do some constructive things that go along somewhat with this type of government that we are having to deal with. And that would be to go to them and to petition them for what we need. And if we could get past testifying, every time I go to a meeting, we can't get too much done because if I do decide to go, everybody got to get up and testify. Now, let me tell you why we all have to testify and tell our own story and our own opinion. Because we were not debriefed. We are all full. It took us 400 and 50 years or so to get in this condition. It might take us 450 years to get out of it. We don't know because we haven't accepted any instruction about how to function or behave and kept with that. We keep changing up. As I said, every generation starts all over. Now, those questions you ask, and they're good questions. But, I mean, they're the same questions that we ask in every city I go to. We got the same questions. And no matter what answer you give, the people don't do nothing. They don't go back and do anything. And I'm not talking about growing Joe in no group. Everybody got a group in their own household, their own tribe. Everybody got a group already to work with. And most of us can't get along and deal with them. So we got a lot of work, but that work got to start. All of that, you know, that thing about it takes a village to raise a child. Well, the second part of that is that the ruin of a nation begins in the home. So we got to start there. There's no way around it. All right, hang on, Sister Showers. Uh, stay with us, Amir. we got to take another break and check the traffic and weather in the DMV. 800-450-7876 to speak to Sister Showers. Uh, take your calls next after the traffic and weather update on 1450. WOL, where information is power. And now, and now back, 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 back to the Carl Nelson Show. On Washington, D.C.'s 1450. 1450 WOL Radio. Thanks for rolling with us and our guest, Sister Shahrazad Ali. Just want to remind you, coming up in the next few days, we're going to speak with a uh, poli sci professor, Dr. James Taylor. He's one of the best in the business, teaches out there in UC, uh, UC Berkeley and also University of San Francisco. Also, one of the founders of the Black Arts Movement, Dr. Hakeem Madabudi, is going to be here as well. So tell your friends to keep it locked on 1450 WOL. Let's go back to uh, Sister Shahrazad. Did you, uh, you finished responding to Amir's question, or are you ready for his next yeah. question? Yeah. Yes, right, and listen, when Hockey comes in, give him the greeting of peace from me. I certainly will. <laughs> <laughs> I will do that. <laughs> Amir? Please do that, okay. <laughs> Amir? Yes. Uh, I will, before I mention my last question, Sister, uh, Sister Charizard, we haven't talked in a little while. I'd like to uh, leave my number for you offline. But and my last question is in the Black Man's Guide to uh, Understanding the Black Woman, uh, and you mentioned read it before she does, and uh, help me and understand further when you, uh, why you said read it before she does. All right, and Keanu because, would take your number because as females, black females, we're very argumentative. You got to read it before us so that you can get your head and mind ready for all of the combat and disagreements she's going to come up with about it. <laughs> so if you read it at the same time, you're not going to be able to keep up with us because we are too good at arguing. So you need to read it first so that you'll have your head ready for when she come at you with the nonsense she's going to come at to disagree because she don't want to get in order naturally. So when she do that, you got to be ready. So it's not a book you can read together. It's a book that you need to read first. And then if you want to let her read it or go over some of the issues in there, because we're going to lie first. We're going to say, oh, no, that ain't true. No, 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 that ain't true. When it's true about all of us to some extent or the other. Mm -hmm. Amen. Thanks, thanks, Amir. We'll put you on hold and get your information for Sister Shahrazad. 800-450-7876. Aretha's calling us from Atlanta on line four. Aretha? I do want to say thank you so very much, Brother Carl. You are the bomb. And I want to say to Sister Shahrazad, greetings. Assalamu alaikum, Sister. Wa alaikum salam. And I bring you greetings of admiration and psychological liberation. Sister Shahrazad, 
I mean, I see your name right, but I want to give you a joke right off the quick of the bat. I pray that it will not take 50 years for us to get it together because, you know, I want to share with you. I hope it takes more like five or ten realistically, and I'm willing to work with you. As a, I want you to know that as a student of the, the uh, Honorable Frances Crest Wilson, she warns us and she reminds us that as black women, we are the mother of all people on the planet Earth. And with that being our narrative, being our, our charge, our house is out of order and needs to be in control. So this is what I want to ask you if you would do. In light of the fact that uh, Milton Lewis Farrakhan, this last Saturday in no, October, he declared us to be an, in, a spiritually independent nation. That sounds like music to my heart, sister. And I'm saying it to say so. In addition to that and the fact that the United Nations just released their recent uh, study, October the 5th, that black people in America are due reparations based on mass incarceration. I heard about years. that, yes. I got a copy of it. I'd love to send it to you. Okay, so I circulated because I think we should, you know, a closed mouth cannot get fed. So I'm asking you to think about, you know, you remind me that we need to have an MGT combined with the Pan-African Black Woman Cultural Center. And so I'm willing to work with you on that. And I want to ask you as a joke, are you married? And if you are, are you taking an application that I can leave you with your husband sometime? In addition, <laughs> <laughs> listen, I mean, you, but, uh, <laughs> so I do want to say that, um, uh, listen, I want to say, as I, as I, as I close, as a tax, as taxpayer system, um, Sharazar, we must remember that uh, we, are, we are taxpayers of our own oppression because slavery is not abolished in this country. The 13th Amendment has just been changed from states' rights to federal administration of free law under mass incarceration. So how can you talk to me, Sherman, and love? I love you, and I do want you to know I Thank you, sister. Yes, ma'am. You, 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 you were talking so fast. I'm trying to remember some of the stuff you said, but uh, it, it may take, as I said, the 50 years. Or if, I, I wish it took five or ten, but we have already spent since the so-called 60s. We've already had over 20 years of our so-called greater freedom to do different things. And we've had a lot of programs that have worked, and a lot of them have failed. Now, here, let me say this so there will be no confusion. Had Minister Farrakhan stayed with the teachings of the Army Elijah Muhammad, then we would have made a lot more progress than we have. But because he decided to dilute the teachings, make up some new information that he came up with, which is okay, he can do that. That's his business. But that's one of the reasons that the nation of Islam itself has not grown in the way that it was growing when our Elijah Muhammad was giving out instructions and teaching the people. And I'm not with those teachings. I'm just with the teachings of our Elijah Muhammad. I'm not with any other group or organization. And you can't have no MGT class with the Pan-African sisters. That's not going to work. That kind of integration of civility, of behavior, of womanhood is too different. That would never work. See all of that about we all doing something different, but we going in the same direction? That's not true. We all doing something different, and we ain't going in no direction because we all got different ideas. And it would take 40 or 50 years to agree on what the agenda is going to be because everybody is fighting against what somebody else got. See, the thing about being released as slaves out here with no training or uh, uh, without any kind of instructions for the whole group is that everybody got a different idea, which represents all the different tribes that we came from. So we're not going to have, once again, no kind of big old group unity. Whatever the information is that you have of good, you're going to have to just practice it in your circle. All right. That's 800. the only way that this is going to work. It's not going to work, y'all, talking about trying to get together, because once we get together, then we're going to start disagreeing, and then ain't nothing going to happen. 800-450-7876. Eric's calling us from New York. He's on line one. Eric, you're on with Sister Sharazad Ali. Uh, yeah, how you doing, uh, Sister Ali? I want to thank you all for great. speaking. Great. Uh, thank you. I want to uh, thank you for speaking with such clarity. Uh, it's weird that, you know, I hear a uh, you know, female talk with uh, such clarity and uh, such logic on, on such issues. Speaking for myself, I'm okay, you know, being a one-woman guy. Not because I'm not attracted mm -hmm. to other women, but I don't want the responsibility of having to raise more than one family. I have enough. Uh, That's right. Okay, and I can appreciate that. That's honest. Sure. But, uh, yeah, I wanted to get to my question. Uh, what you're saying about disagreement, I think that that's a very profound and truthful statement. And in my opinion, a lot of this comes from uh, internal family violence amongst black people. Um, what I'm seeing, like, uh, for instance, recently, there's been like a lot of public beatings and brutality from parents against children on social media. This seems to be something that's, uh, you know, you know, social media is a fairly new thing. But even back in the day, you know, we seem to want to beat our kids or hit our husbands or hit our wives. 
in public. And I think that a lot of this disagreement comes from distrust because of violence that's inside of families. Uh, it seems like we like to replace intellect or instruction with I'll smack you in the mouth or I'll punch you in the mouth. And you see this manifested in, in the music or on the reality TV shows. We're constantly fighting, constantly hitting each other. And I uh, got another question, but I just wanted to get your take on that. Uh, do you, you know, what do you, what do you think about, you know, basically uh, this, this seem to be ongoing brutality amongst black people, which I don't think is, is in particular to black people. You know, there's, there's, there's plenty of other people that commit acts of violence against family members. Well, we we only trying to be concerned with self. See, as I said, that's one of our problems. We keep trying to Absolutely. either compare ourselves to other people or include them. We need to be concerned with ourselves and our condition. Uh, we got a lot of reasons of why we fight each other, and it's all based on some kind of disagreement, disagreeing about what you do, I do, or say or don't say, or different things like that. Uh, I think that uh, there's so much repair to be done. And the uh, uh, my teacher used to tell me that without divine intervention, not a one of them us would be saved. Because I'm not the soothsayer. I don't have all of the solutions. Uh, we all have different views on why we think those things are the way they are. But it, it's okay. It don't matter why they are. Let's correct it. If we mm-hmm. never get to the root of why it's like that, if we recognize it's a bad behavior that's destroying us, well, then let's do something to correct it. That's what we need to do. Uh, there's a lot of violence going on in our communities and in our homes, and it's not all physical. It's mm-hmm. the violence of abandonment, the violence of starvation, the violence of overeating, the violence of feeding little bitty babies pork. The violence of even giving our children dairy milk from the cow. When yeah, I see some people giving their children out here. Children, cut you off. Mo- yeah, most of our children are lactose intolerant, but that's what we're programmed to do, and we haven't changed that. We give it milk to our children for 18 years. The cow only give it to the cow for six weeks. So something's <laughs> wrong with that. That's something we could change, but we don't. Sure. And, um, yeah, and then my last uh, question was, I don't know if you can answer this, but uh, I don't know if this is true, but of the merger of the Nation of Islam with uh, Scientology, do you know what's going on with that? Why? Is there a reason? Some more nonsense. Some more nonsense that Minister Farrakhan came up with for the people. As I said, I'm not with all of that. I'm just with the teachings of the Army Elijah Muhammad. And uh, uh, those people, uh, uh, that's just nonsense. If he, The messenger gave us what he said was the supreme wisdom. It was the only program that had a... Uh, uh, instructions of how to become civilized for the men, the women, uh, for the food, for the behavior, for the clothing, for the businesses, for the schooling, the education, and everything. But as we all know, we'll mess up anything. So the Messenger's program is vibrant, alive, and intact. And as I said, had the Nation of Islam been practicing that, Instead of turning it into a whole business just to sell uh, DVDs and CDs and books and stuff, had they just kept on with the do for self program and not brought in the devil who is the head of the church of Scientology, the messenger would have never sent us nowhere with a name called church. That's out of the question. So we shouldn't have been doing that. But uh, uh, nevertheless, everybody do what they want to do. I'm not saying that, you know, but that's not what you want to do. You want to read message to the black man and get the information from the teacher himself. We're not trying to just go along with other people who are making up things just to do what they want to do. Sure. All right. Okay. Well, uh, again, thank you for the clarity and being so real. Yes, sir. And, uh, thank you. All right. Thanks, Eric. 800-450-7876. Line five. Ayo's calling us from Maryland. Ayo, you're on with Sister Sharazad. Good afternoon, Carl. And, uh, well, salam alaikum, Sister Ali. I tell you, you are very, you're very refreshing. My brothers and sisters, and my blood brothers and sisters got together several years ago. We bought land. We sent people to school to get organic certification and we're yes, using sir. the education of uh, those who have mm-hmm. uh, uh, degrees in education to redesign our educational system for our children. We've just mm-hmm. came up with the plans for the cabins that we're going to build on this farm mm. so that we can have an That's organic wonderful, farm. wonderful, and wonderful. My question for you is, my, me and my wife have been together for 35 years, and we have openly discussed the reality that as the head of the household, there are so many women out here who need a figure such as myself and 
other men to come forth and at least be available to them? And how can we change their mindset to understand that this would not be based on the seeds of greed and lust, but based on the seeds right. of nutrition, uh, cultural and necessity, uh, based on the seeds of necessity. Right. That's right. So how okay. do we uh, how are we able to convey this? And my wife is listening right now. So believe me, our ears are definitely focused on what you have to say. Well, I don't know how you can convince a woman. She either with you, it's a ride or die. You know, your woman is either with you and she go along with your program, or she holds on to her own insecurity and fears and does not allow you to grow or the nation to grow. As I said, I'm not talking about just for. Uh, uh, as I said, the sexual thing has been blown out of proportion. I don't mean that yeah. end of it. But that is the one end that all of us as women are so terrified about. You can't do but so much with that. That's it. Don't nobody break up about sex. That's never the issue. You know, you That's people true. break up, and they break up about serious issues, and then they run into each other a year later, and they go to the hotel. Right. Hang on a second, Sister Sharjah. we got to take a break. We're close to the top of the hour. Stay with us at AO. 800-450-7876. Your call's next as the big show rolls on from 1450. WOL, where information is power. And live around the world on WOLDCnews.com. And thank you for staying with us. Our guest is Sister Shahrazad Ali. I say the last time you, most of you folks probably saw her, she was uh, doing a TV show on the uh, HLN Network with uh, Dr. Drew. Well, she's here for you now, and you can reach her at 800-450-7876. And Sister Shahrazad, I'm going to let you finish responding to Ayo's question. Yeah, I, I want to. I hate to have to discuss this part of it, but this is a good audience to try to get this straight. One of the reasons that we as women are so terrified about our man having another woman is because we think that sex is connected to love. It's not. Sex don't have nothing to do with love. It's a bodily function, like sneezing, urinating, having a BM. All of those things just allow you to release yourself. But it don't really have anything to do with love unless that person decides that they have some feelings actually for that person. Now, we know it don't have nothing to do with love because that's why you can do it by yourself to get that same feeling almost. So it's not based on that. But we as women think that, oh, if he's inside her body like he's inside mine, he loves her more than he loves me. And that's not true. Men have the capacity to love more than one woman like we as women love more than one of our children. We love all of our children the same. We don't have no best child or second best child. We love them all evenly. Well, that's how a man... Hello? Hello? Yes. Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah. When, yeah okay. well, you, when, you went dark for a minute there. We yeah. just couldn't hear anything. But one more thing I'd like to add to this dynamic is that uh, we had to do this in conflict. Don't get me wrong. Our family just didn't all agree to this. The elders had to take the ropes to move forward with the idea and plant the seeds and implement out of this their own that's resources. Right. But yet that's and still right. and, in doing and that's so... All, brother, that's all I'm doing is planting the seeds because at least this will get us to thinking about it and considering it because it is coming. It's going to be here and we need to be ready. And another thing I wanted to add is that we're not doing it for our generation here. We're setting the foundation for our generation right. here, but we're taking our children away from them so that we could separate them and get them to a right mind That's state right. so that they can continue That's the process right. that we lay down. Listen, sister, it's been an honor. Thank you, Carl. It's always good. You know, I listen yes, all sir. the time. And, uh, sister, please be blessed because you are a blessing to us. Thank you very much. Thank you, brother. All right. All right. Thanks, A.O. 800-450-7876. Mickey's calling us on line two. Mickey's calling us from the district. Mickey? Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Hi. Yeah. Uh, hello to Carl and hello to the guests. I've always admired Sister Shirazza Ali. I remember seeing you on the Phil Donahue show when I was much younger. Um, <laughs> yes. <but I> wanted, <laughs> you were beautiful, um, and you still are. Um, but I wanted to ask... Um, I, I think you you're from Ohio. Hello? Well, what's the question? What difference does that make? Yeah. What's the question? Oh, yeah, yes, ma'am. Um, I wanted to know what your your view, what you thought of the police killing of of Tamir Rice. Um, thank you. 
Right. Oh, sister, you know I didn't agree with that. They've been shooting us down in the street. The only reason we know now is because of social media. Let me say something about social media, though, Carl, while I'm on that topic. Um, the uh, YouTube, the Instagrams, and all of that is the worst thing that could have happened to the black community. The very, I don't know anything that's worse other than drugs that could happen to our community to be so destructive and tear up so many of our relationships. That Instagram nonsense has created so many problems in our relationships, not just man and woman, families, brother and sister, sister and brother, sister and sister, all kind of problems in business and everything. And that YouTube has taken the place of television and allowed every one of us who want to to go on there and be as big a fool as we want to in front of the entire world because that information floats around the entire planet. And that helps me to understand why so many people come here and think that we are not worth anything and are just ridiculous and savages because of the nonsense that we put up on there because we all want to have uh, that exhibitionism and that exposure. We need to stop doing that. That's a bunch, of, a bunch of nonsense that has not helped us. These cell phones that everybody's talking in all the time. What did we do 10 years ago when we weren't on those phones? Who was we talking to? We don't even like each other that much to talk all day like that and all night. Everywhere you go, you go in the airport. The only person that ain't on the phone is me. All so right. that's, that's something that we need to look at. Some of us need to get that out of our home. That is such a distraction in a negative way. 800-450-7876. Sandra's calling us on line one. She's also comes from Washington, D.C. Sandra, you know, Sister Shire is out. Hi, Carl, and your guest. Um, I know your book, The Black Man's Guide to Understand the Black Woman. Um, yes. In the book, you said that you were talking about black women and um, arm, body odor. You mentioned that in the book? Yes, I have talked about that. Yes. Oh, I think that's a foul. <laughs> I think that's, uh, you know, I think that's a foul. I, I think it's very foul that when we walk around with body odor, I sometimes even right now, and our young girls are not being taught anything about personal hygiene. And so it's a real serious issue. And the schools are not allowed to teach it as much as they should be able to because they say that's something that should be taught in the home. A lot of families don't have money for food, less known for deodorant. And I, I, don't, I don't see these black women with um, body odor. I don't run into these black women with body odor. Where do you run into these black women with body odor at? Oh, uh, all kind of places. In stores, uh, usually in you know stores, banks, just the places that I go. I don't go a lot of places out in the public world, but stores, okay. banks, okay. lines in different places, the post office. Oh yeah. And you said black women are very argumentative. What percentage of black yes, women? Yes, we are. What, what percentage? Yeah, we are. What percentage would you say are very argumentative? Oh, I, I couldn't quantify it in that way, so I say most of us. Oh, uh, I disagree. I mean, I can listen to you now, but when you used to come on these airways in the 90s, I, I couldn't listen to you. I couldn't listen to you. Well, that, that's, that's what that brother was just saying. We're trying to lay a foundation with certain information. Mm-hmm. Now, it has taken you, the book been out 26 years, so it has taken you 26 years to be able to at least have this discussion with me, and that's very good, sister. Right. Okay? Mm-hmm. It takes yeah. us a yeah. long time to adjust to certain things because we think disagreement means that something right, is not right. True. right. And just because we disagree with it don't mean it ain't true. It may not be true all of the time. You understand? Right. It ain't true 24 hours a day, but it's true some of those hours of the day, and those are the hours that are detrimental to our men, our children, and our community. I, I think you're too hard on black women. I, you know, I think you're a little too hard on black women. I understand. Women. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Okay. Well, we are the mother of civilization. Right. And so we birth the nation and we raise it, right, however right. we raise it. Right. And so we have to be hard on the people that start and birth the nation. And we have lost our way. Now, that doesn't mean, once again, as I said, everybody all of the time. Yes. But we have lost our way. And the main way we have lost our way is how we get along with our man, because we have continued to break and tear him down to make him conform to our insecurity. Right. Okay. You have a good day. Thanks, Andrew. Yes, ma'am. Eight hundred four five zero seven eight seven six. Gina's calling us from Charlotte. Hey, hey Carl, it's yeah. gonna take up twenty six more years. <laughs> <laughs> well, she was moving in the right direction, though. Yes, she was. I'm so yeah. proud of her. That's right. She was right. able to come out and articulate it and find out that I got answers for it. Right. So that and was before, good. 
Right. Before they just accept what probably somebody told them and just uh, deal with it. But anyway, mm -hmm. Gina's here from Charlotte. Gina? Hey, good day, uh, Brother Carl and Sister Har Har Harajat. Um, I, I learned of you in the early, uh, late 90s when I was, um, you know, in, in Atlanta, you know, living single and free. I now have responsibilities. And I find everything from day one, I, I connected with you. And this is what I wanted to ask you as far as the, the, the you know, the, the perils of our, <laughs> our community. Um, what do you think when, when, you know, we as a group of people don't have a vision, you know, we don't really have a vision um, for ourselves. Therefore we can't plant the seeds of the, a vision for our children. And when you talk about most of what you talk about is disagreement and with, with, with distrust comes disagreement. But what about, this, this, we just have to find some kind of way to get a vision for ourselves. Well, because, you know, yeah, I think, uh, sister, thank you for that question. That was really good. I think that uh, we all have some kind of vision of the time and what must be done. We just don't want to do it because there's a lot of work. Oh, we got a vision. Now, sometimes that vision is just to go buy four packs of number 10 hair and get it weaved into our head. Sometimes the vision is to go buy drugs or go stay in the club all night. So we got visions, but we have either the wrong vision. And when we sit around and say we need to have our own school, we need to come together, we need to do this and do that, oh, we got a vision. We just need to get up and start trying to do it. And we don't have to do it on a national scale. As I said again, we have to stop starting over. Every time we do so, we're not coming up with anything new. We got the same problems, and we keep coming up with the same solutions. We just won't do it. Right. Yes, uh, and one more, one more thing I wanted to say, um, sister, and to you, Carl, um, and I'd like to come on the show, Carl, because I, I really want us to understand something about what we've been taught. Um, there is a lot of remedy, and when I say remedy, I mean uh, real solutions to us, and not just as a group of black folks, but just individuals that, that will uh, propel us to the next level. One thing in particular, I have learned how to use the IRS. I mean, because we're paying the taxes and we're working and we're going to do these tax returns. I have found a way not only to help us to discharge our debt, but also how to use the IRS to our benefit. And if, okay, if we're so, gonna so be let me hold you up here, right now. Let me let me okay. slow your roll right now. If that's okay. something you want to do, circulate that in the community. Don't go on the airways and airways and tell the enemy of what you have learned, because then he gonna put up a blockage and stop you from doing it. So don't put that out there. That's something just you yeah. need to do where you at. Okay? Yeah, I mean that's what I do. But I mean I just yeah. Want well, to then do that. And, but you don't need to go forward with that in the way of a big public radio, because the enemy is listening to every word we're saying and you don't know how that's going to ricochet and he'll shut you down some kind of way and what you have learned of good to help our people you will not be able to disseminate it right well, good point you. hang on hang on there uh with us uh thanks uh gina we gotta take our last look at the traffic and weather right here on 1450 wol where information is power And our guest, Sister Shahrazad Ali. Again, the number to call to speak to her is 800-450-7876. Sister Shahrazad, did you finish your response or, or would you want to take another call? I want to say that uh, the black man's guide to understanding the black woman and Are You Still a Slave, which is really an important book. In fact, I recommend Are You Still a Slave before the black man's guide, then it'll help you understand why you have certain attitudes, uh, is available at Amazon.com. Now, the black woman's guide to understanding the black man and things your parents should have told you, which is a great book for our children to help them understand the world that they're in and how to grow up and act like they got good sense, uh, you have to get that directly from me. I don't have all of my books on there with the uh, uh, white people. I just have the black man's guide and are you still a slave? But you can contact me at Sister Sharazad Ali at yahoo.com. If you put anything in on the internet, a whole bunch of stuff will come up about me. You'll see how to spell my name. Sister Sharazad Ali at yahoo.com. If you contact me on there, I'll tell you uh, how to get the other two books and uh, how much they cost and where to send your money order. Don't send me no checks. I got a drawer full of them. 
and uh, we can go from there, okay? <laughs> uh, I remember speaking about Are You Still a Slave? I remember when that book came out and you and Armstrong Williams had some, some verbal oh, spark. Oh, <laughs> my goodness. <laughs> back you in know the day. What? Oh, when I think back, <laughs> I don't even know how I went through all of that. You know how everybody was fighting me on every side, everywhere. No matter what book I wrote, they, you know, was beating me up about it. But, you know, I'm proud of what I have done in America because I'm the mother of the Black Book Explosion. See, That's before right. the Black Man's Guide to Understand the Black Woman in 1990, we didn't really have no bunch of books. We had some books by Maya Angelou and Chautauqua and the Shane and a couple of people. But uh, we didn't really have, like now, you know, the market is flooded with books because of the example I set. Everybody started writing books, which is a good thing because we were so behind, you know. That's right. A, a lot of the Black bookstores uh, owe their existence to you. That's right. They opened up. With just one book, The Black that's, Man's Guide. That's right. That's right. I remember that. That's right. 800-450-7876. And before you go, I'll let you tell us again how we can get a copy, for because I know we got a lot of new listeners who probably haven't read those books. Let's go to Billy. Yes, the, uh, the Black Man's Guide to Understanding the Black Woman is the yellow book, and Are You Still a Slave are available at Amazon.com. Right. The other book, the green book, The Black Woman's Guide to Understanding the Black Man and Things Your Parents Should Have Told You, a book for our youth, our teenagers, and our young people, uh, you have to get that directly from me. And you can do that by going to Sister Sharazad Ali at yahoo.com and ask me what you want, and I'll send you the information about how much the book costs and where to send your money order to of how to get the books, and then uh, you'll send it to my P.O. box, and then I'll ship it out to you. Now, I know that's the longer way around, but I can't have no website because every time I do, somebody hack it and mess up everybody's credit cards and everything, so I had to stop doing that, Carl, and just do it the slow way, but at least you'll get it. Within two weeks, you'll have your information. All right. Good deal. 800-450-7876. Billy's waiting for us. Call us from Shaky City, California. Where's that, Billy? That's in Los Angeles, oh, Carl. Don't okay. you know you used to be a resident out here? I'm we're telling you. To start shaking. We're something to start shaking in a minute. Uh, yeah, that's quite <laughs> true. Yeah. Uh, sister, sister, I love your energy. Uh, as a black man, I refuse to cross the color line and date outside my race. Praise be to God. Yes, I refuse to. And I've been hit on by two folks. Oh, I know you have, because, see, white women ain't crazy. They understand what we kicking to the curb. They want it, and they come after y'all hard. As I said, these Latino women, they coming after y'all. The Asian women coming after y'all. Everybody wants y'all but us. See, they accept well, you all more than we learn to accept our own man. I've talked to a lot of them, and they say they don't understand why we don't get along with y'all. Well, I don't understand it neither. Um, it's not about me. <laughs> Uh, when uh, I want to make a couple of comments here. It's not about me. Me, myself, it's about our race. And I have married before with a woman with children because it wasn't about me. They didn't have a father, and me being a black man know my role as a That's black right. man is a husband, a provider, a teacher, a protector, an educator of that household. It was just so sad that the female was not on the same page that I was. Okay. And, I mean, it hurt me dearly. Um, my question to you, to find a sister, and I know you're paying all the mother junks out there, but to find a sister that is conscious, where must a conscious brother go? Well, let me tell you this. Uh, everywhere I go, the brothers say, sister, I need a good woman. And then the sisters say, sister, I need a good man. And then if I put all y'all in a room together, don't nobody get along. <laughs> hey, I can drop y'all in the center of a city with five million people, and y'all can't find nobody to get along with. That's our women and our men. And I'm not beating everybody up today. I don't want to do that, Carl. I hope that doesn't sound that way. But I'm just saying, we are into repetitive error. We just keep making the same mistakes over and over. We don't have any patience with each other. We don't accept each other's human frailties. We go out on a date with somebody once or twice, and they say something we don't like. That's the end of that. We don't never want to see them again. You know, we don't want to work through nothing. We don't want to just accept. And I, this is what I recommend, brother, and this is going to be hard. 
But when we meet somebody coming out the gate after we have that old tell those initial lies about who we are and how we are and make up that personality for that person, after we get through with those lies, the next thing we ought to talk about is that now you know we're going to have a hard time because we're just out of slavery. You know they've taught us to hate each other. You know they're going to put all okay. kinds of stumbling blocks in our way, and we're going to have to work together and recognize when those issues come up that it's not really me or you. It's the system trying to destroy us that we've been conditioned right. to. Now, right. if we could right. have some real talk, that would be good. And the Black Man's Guide does set the stage for you to have some real talk. Now, it does do that. But some of the sisters don't want to have that real talk. I mean, they just is. Well, then you know that ain't the one. I don't advise anybody to stay in an abusive relationship, men or women. If she don't, then you need to move on to some of the other millions of women out there who are desperate and going on the Internet and taking their clothes off, walking down the street, showing all they behind. All of these women is just crying out for a man. No, well, uh, I'm not the man then if they have to expose themselves like that. Well, you can get teachers. Maybe she won't never do it another day, but this is what they think they have to do to attract a man because this is all we ever had that was of any value in slavery. Right, and the European as a role model. I agree with you. That's right. I agree with you. All right. Thanks, Billy. So, uh, just, just keep on. Thank you, brother. Thanks, Billy. 800-450-7876. Go to Charlotte on, on line five. Kwame's calling us. Kwame, you're on with Sister Sharzad. Guess. I have a question. I have a lot of female associates that's going out here fighting that LGB fight, and I'm telling them that fight isn't for them. And there's something else. There's a lot of these sisters out here trying to hook brothers up with the enemy. How do you feel about that? And one more thing, well, please. Can yeah. they stop saying they don't need a man because we need each other? i take that offline, please. Oh, no, they need a man. And those men out there talking that smack, they need a woman. Now, the way we know they know a man, let's get that out of the way first, that they will need a man is because when those women are out there uh, saying that they are gay and lesbian and all of this nonsense, a lot of them are using different devices to emulate a penis. And so they want a man. They just don't want to be bothered with a man. Okay, but they want what a man got. So they do want a man. It's the same way with the men, you know. They want to use the rectum as an artificial vagina. All of them people is lying. They done made up something they're under some kind of self-hypnosis, and they have come up with some ideas. Our women have always tended to like the gay men. They'll have a best friend as a gay man. If you look at a lot of the television shows, a lot of those housewife shows that come on, all of them may not have a straight man on there, Harley, but they always got some gay men on there doing something or working for them or being with them or something. This is something we are attracted to because that man is no threat to try to tell us what to do. That man is no threat to try to give us any instructions. We feel like we could turn that man into just another girlfriend. And so that's how we deal with it. Oh, he's just another girl. I ain't got to worry about him. And we'll expose him to our children and a lot of other people because we think that's the means and ways of control. But, but let See, me interrupt you and ask you. We like why, to why have a man, but we don't want him to act like no man. So why do they put it, always the, the, the gay uh, uh, person in, in all these shows? Because most of the people working in backstage and in the background are gay. A lot of them are still in the closet. A lot of them are out. Because, see, the gays are overrepresented in the media. For them to be 1% of the population and they're telling the other 99% what to do about everything, they got to have some other support systems other than them. They only represent 1%. And so it's a lot of gays in the closet. They got a lot of help back in them producers and them sponsors. They got a lot of help in a lot of places that we have never had. And so they get the jobs. They overrepresented on the news show, on the weather shows, on the uh, sitcoms, everything. They're overrepresented because they have people there who are speaking up for them and pulling for them and selecting them. So what does that say for the rest of us who aren't gay? If nobody's pulling for well, us. It, it don't matter what it's say for you. You wasn't getting none of them jobs anyway. You're a black man. Or me either. You know, so it, that don't really affect us in the same way because they wasn't hiring us anyway. That's what I'm saying. Gotcha. You know, and so it's a bad thing. You have to keep your sons intact. Make sure they understand. Now, I got a, a grown-up son, but then I got a two grand, three grandsons. And one is 14, one is 16, and the other one is 
23 or something. But at any rate, my son, we'd be talking to them all the time. See, we used to just have to try to protect them from Becky, making sure he didn't come home with Tammy Sue. All right? We had to make sure them white girls didn't catch on to it because they're just wonderful. They can talk. They're handsome, you know, and uh, uh, they're very well spoken of themselves, and they're neat, and they're clean and intelligent. We used to just have to watch the white girls. Now we got to watch the gay men and the white girls. All right. Hang on a second. We got to take a quick break. I'm going to let you finish that thought. 800-450-7876. Speak to Sirens at Ali. We'll take your calls next as the big show rolls on from 1450. W-O-L, where information is power. And now, now back, 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 back to the Carl Nelson Show. On Washington, D.C.'s 1450. 1450 W.O.L. Radio. Thanks for staying with us. And I guess Sister Shahzad Ali. Sister Shahzad, I'm going to let you finish up what you were saying before we left for the uh, break. Carl. Carl. Yeah. I'm a visiting guest. I don't live with y'all. How long have I been on here? Uh, About 90 minutes. Oh, that's too long. Okay, we're going <laughs> to take our last question. All right. All right, uh, let's go to San Diego. Kevin's calling us from San Diego. He's on line two. Kevin? Is Kevin there on San Diego on line two? All right. Kevin going once? Going twice? <laughs> let's, go, <laughs> let's go to Jonathan in California then. Jonathan's on line four. Jonathan? Uh, I'm so glad I get the last question. Salam alaikum, sister. How are you today? Walaikum salam. I'm fine. Praise be to Allah, brother. Uh, alhamdulillah. Let, let, I don't even know where to start. Um, I, just a quick note. Me and my wife have been together 20 years, married for 15. And she suddenly told me one day that she was an independent woman. I almost, I almost <laughs> ate the phone. I was, <laughs> I was thinking to myself, how are you independent? We've been together 20 years, married for 15. Where, where, where is the entity? That's that. That's, that's that's how the system got 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 some of the systems mind messed up. Like really? Yeah, but you know what? A lot of them buy into that because they think that means they're gonna have some freedom. You know, leave her with a flat tire out on the highway one night and see if she need a man. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thank, thank, thank you so much. Hey, my, 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 man, <laughs> my main question uh, before you get off the line is. Why do you keep bothering with telling us and hitting us in the head with the truth? Just, just explain that. What, <laughs> what, what makes you love us so much that, that you feel compelled to keep beating us in the head with the truth? And we just, we just won't take it for what it is. And I hang up, sister, and take your uh, answer off the air. Uh, Salam alaikum. God bless you. Oh, I like you all the time. Thank you, sister. Bye-bye. <laughs> well, I want to say that I wasn't touched or nothing. God didn't send me. I ain't been anointed or appointed. It's just what I personally decided to do because I love black people, and I know that you are the best. They don't keep you out because you're the worst. They keep you out because you're the very best that the earth has ever produced. And the only person that don't know that is you. Everybody else knows it. In every other nationality, on every other continent, in every other nation, everybody knows that the black man in America is the best but that you are repressed by a long-time open enemy and uh, you have been tricked with the wrong diet, the wrong God, and the wrong wardrobe. And all of those things have held us back. But that's just why I do it, brother, because somebody got to do it. And I don't have no competition because it ain't no woman out here teaching what I'm teaching. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I could work every day of the week if I wanted to, but I don't, and I don't want to. You know, but uh, that's just, you know, what it is. I'm just trying to help make a difference for the future. You know, we're aging out of this stuff. A lot of us have already made the transition into death, and a lot of us are getting older. This is what the purpose of God is, to stop deterioration. In the meanwhile, it's not stopped yet, and due to a bad diet and bad atmosphere and pressure and stress, we're all dying out, and we need to be able to carry these ideas on instead of y'all waiting until I die to say, you know what, she was talking is right. And let me get this straight. I'm not making this up. I had a teacher who taught me the truth, and that teacher was the Army Elijah Muhammad. All other people in America that black people admire, Khaled Muhammad, Muhammad Ali, 
Malcolm X, Louis Farrakhan, Sharazad Ali. What is the one thing we have in common, Carl? We will all talk about Army Elijah Muhammad. That's the one thing we have. Right. That's and true. that one teaching has allowed each of us to go and make a way over everybody because it's the truth and it agrees with your nature. All right. uh, Kevin has called back from San Diego. He wants to, really wants to speak to you. Kevin? <laughs> yes. Uh, good afternoon. Yes, sir. I just want to ask one question, and normally this is the only question I ever have. How much blame do you put on the president? For the state of black America, uh, you know, his hands are pretty much tied. So how much blame do you put on him for what we're going through? And I'll take my not any. Off Thank you. Not, not any. That was just a publicity stunt to put him in there. I don't put no bunch of blame on him. He didn't put us in this condition. He in the same condition we in, mentally dead, blind, deaf, and dumb to the knowledge of himself. So he did what he was going to do. The white people wasn't going to put nobody in there that was conscious and was going to come in there and do nothing for you and me. That wasn't ever going to happen, you know. It was a, a very, it was just something beautiful to look at. And he had such a beautiful family. Now, that's one thing he did teach us, how to get along in public. Him and his wife, we don't know nothing about their private life. They didn't never act ignorant in front of us. She'd been very civilized. They got two civilized children. And I just love that because they did set a good example of that. And I think that's the best thing to remember about them. So it's all symbolic. Sister Sharjah? Yeah. It's all yes, symbolic? Sir. Yeah, it was just symbolic. It was not transformative. It was just symbolic, yeah. Before I let you go, did you, did you okay, see... Okay, Carl, but, I guess but, it's time for me to go Yeah, now. but one, one last question. Do you, do you see hope for us? Do you think we can, we, we can really make it? Of make course it? there's hope for us. You are the original man, the Asiatic black man, the maker, the owner, cream of the planet Earth, God of the universe. There's always hope for you. It just looks bad, but it's not going to be. You're going to survive. You've been here over 76 trillion years, and you're going to be the last man standing if there's ever such a thing. So, yes, there's hope for us, but it's, uh, we have a hard head. We're going to have to be beat into submission, not physically beat, but times and conditions dictate behavior. And as the conditions tighten up, because the enemy is tightening them up because right. he's afraid for his own demise because they're becoming weaker and weaker. Their birth rate is way down. Okay. And before, uh, you, go, before you go though, give us, yeah. tell us again how we can get your books. Uh, Amazon.com. You can get the black man's guide and Are you still a slave. You can call, contact me, my email at sister Sharazan Ali at yahoo.com. And uh, I'll tell me which books you're looking for, and I'll send you the information so you can get them sending me a money order, and you'll send that to my P.O. box. Okay. But Thanks, Sister Shazza. Yes, sir. Listen, thank you, Carl. You know, I don't come often, but when I do, I raise a lot of sand. Okay? You, yes, you do. <laughs> I thank you for joining us Listen, today. I love you, brother, and I love all of the black people that's trying to do the right thing. All right. We love you, too. Sister Shazza. I like them.